Welcome back everyone to Crusader Kings 3. It is June of 1361. I was just taking a peek at my family tree over time uh, and currently playing as Emperor Edward IV who's 25 years old uh, and I was looking all the way back to the beginning of the dynasty which was Earl Edward of Warwickshire and he is my 10th great grandfather. So 10 greats grandfather. Uh, and, you know, the, the line kind of descends from him through Duke Edward I of Mercia, Duke Edward II, Edward III. Uh, and then it went over here to Earl Edward uh, of Worcestershire, then Duke Wolfmere of Mercia. Uh, and then his son was the first to claim the title of King of England, King Edward I. Uh, and then his son became Edward, the first Emperor of Britannia. And from there on, you can see the dynasty tree. We've got the different houses that have grown up within the Green Hill dynasty. And this is our current dynasty here. A lot of women at the moment, including my own three daughters. So I'm a little concerned about being able to pass on uh, my realms to a son. But I'm only 25, so there's plenty of time. My wife's 27. Plenty of time to have a son yet. Okay, so... Um, the emperor of the Byzantine Empire is currently unmarried. He's actually... Oh. So the Byzantine Emperor is already a member of my house. Really? Greenhill Aberfaw. Okay. So I didn't realize we actually had that. Uh, yeah. So um, how did that happen is my question. Because his, oh, his father was a part of it. So his father... Goes back here. All right, cool. So looking at that now, the Greenhill Dynasty now has two emperors, Byzantine and uh, Britannia. And then, of course, we have the King of Scotland, the King of Wales, the King of Ireland, and then a number of dukes. Very cool. So let's take a look at the, the house map. So it's not quite my house because it's a different branch of the house, but still awesome nonetheless. Now let's see if we can get the Holy Roman Emperor. So I've got my sister to marry off, and I'm looking at the King of Leon. We cannot get a matrilineal marriage for that one, though. So we'll go ahead and just marry her off anyway. I like to keep marrying my family into powerful kingdoms, especially ones that I'm not actually related to. So now we've got an alliance with Leon. Now we've still got another sister, Sophia. I don't want to marry her off to the Holy Roman Emperor because we're already um, inbred there a little bit. Although, maybe. I mean, that would get it directly into the Green Hill Dynasty. Eh. Limbs are long and knobby. Oh, it's no longer valid to send. He must have gotten married. Oh, actually, that's not the problem. My wife and my sister left. She's gone to somewhere else. Kalos Lehman. She's too far away for me to interact with. Alrighty then. Alright, we won the war that... I had to get involved in, but didn't really get involved in. All right, we're going to go on a pilgrimage. Let's go to Jerusalem. It'll cost a thousand gold to do it, but we can afford that. It's going to make us some mean amount of piety. We've got a new intrigue lifestyle perk available. Don't lose piety or clergy opinion from torturing or executing others. Not that I'm necessarily planning to do that, but you never know. If your daughter and heir Anna could visit my court to meet her peers. I feel like he might be... Well, we're getting along well. I hope he isn't just trying to kidnap her. Oh, you want two of my daughters? You're not going to ask for the third one, are you? Alright. I feel like I just made a colossal mistake. So, let's talk about this historically. Because this happened when... Oh boy, running into another uh, naked guy. Uh, when Edward II was king of England, 
his wife, uh, th- there was a, there's a lot to the backstory, but basically, his wife, who um, is the daughter of the king of France, ends up in France, and uh, they decide to send his son Edward the Third, future Edward the Third, as a to, to go pay homage to the king of France. And he mistakenly gives in to this, and then they basically take his son and heir hostage. Uh, so my children did return, so that's good. Um, but it ended up being one of the things that sealed the fate of Edward II, allowing his son to be taken by his wife and her lover, Roger Mortimer. All right, 875 piety. Okay, so I would like to change the succession law to primogeniture, which means all... Uh, titles will go to my oldest child, um, but I can't do that as long as the King of Brittany, the Prince in Scotland, and the King of Wales oppose it. So we've got to start working on those three and getting them on our side. So let's start with the King of Brittany. We're going to start with a sway scheme on him. We're also going to give him a gift. How much would it be? 172. Oh yeah, we can we can handle that. Well, look, we had another daughter. That makes four. Can't seem to have sons. I'm starting to get a bit of a Henry VIII complex here. We haven't had that problem so far. We have yet to ever have an issue with passing on the throne to a son. Okay, we're now at a place where all of our powerful vassals approve except the King of Wales. So we're going to send him another gift. I already sent him one. And we're going to see if that's enough to get this done. No, it didn't. My vassal King Eastman created a cadet branch uh, up in Scotland. That's fine. Alright, so let's work on swaying him instead. All right, current situation now. Um, we just got to get this prince in Scotland. So we're going to try to bribe him. He's the only one that opposes that change. Uh, we got to get along with these guys because this prince is the one that we need to, to sway. All right, let's hear this one more time. That'll both of them the prince is the guy okay we got a favor hook on him excellent okay so now let's take a look at this again primogeniture they all approve boom let's make it happen that is something I've wanted to do since the beginning of this game and we finally have primogeniture uh, we got a faction created against us I'm really not too worried about that now, the King of Ireland drank himself to death, so now we need a new marshal. Looks like the uh, Duke Joffrey is probably our best bet. Plus, it'll turn him in our favor. He was uh, not quite happy with us. So I've got almost 6,000 gold now. I guess I should probably start thinking about what to do with it. And once again, I'm going to build up my military, although you can see my levies are down a bit. Let's start maxing out some of these levies. We can go all the way up to 17 with our house carls. Okay. Okay, so I think once again we're gonna gonna look toward France for expansion of our realm. We've got the Holy Roman Empire and the King of Leon as allies. Where is Leon? There it is right there. Um, and France has one ally that's not particularly powerful. I could really take them on by myself if I wanted to. Uh, so let's go to our council. And then let's look for a claim to fabricate. Uh, we're going to go for Anjou. We'll see what happens. Okay. We are able to get the unpressed claim on the county of Anjou. Which now means it's time... To declare war for said county. And the 
course, that means now we are at war with France once again. But I feel pretty good about our chances here, especially if we call our allies to war, which I'm definitely going to do in this uh, situation. Holy Roman Empire. We've got uh, all three empires going to war with France, as well as Leon. I'm also going to go ahead and start constructing a castle uh, here in Brittany. Let's go ahead and do that. It only costs 400 to do that. We should be doing more holdings like that. Military. So let's go ahead and create a new rally point. We'll create it right here. We're going to use this to raise everyone. So we've got the territory right in the center of France that we control. So uh, it looks like there is another hostile army headed that way. How did he get so much in the way of hostile armies? He called somebody. Oh, yeah, we've got 79,000 troops total available to us. He called some allies I didn't know he had. So we're going to sit tight over here while our friends hopefully arrive to help us out. Who's this here? Aquitaine. What are they doing? How did we end up at war with Aquitaine? Interesting. So what I'm going to do is as soon as we win this, which we just did, we're going to go after the French army before he can link up with the army of Aquitaine. And then we'll turn around and go after them. Holy 39,000 man army. Please tell me that's the uh, the Holy Roman Emperor. The army of Aachen. It is. And we just caught up to the French. The Battle of Le Mans. There are additional armies headed this way, as is the huge army under the Holy Roman Emperor. All right, so that was a quite a battle there. We lost 2,000 killed, we killed 7,000. Let's look at the details, especially I like looking at the knights. The Duke Joffrey, who is my, uh, my marshal, killed 100 men in that battle. That is ridiculous, wow, 53. The Duke of Kent killed 50. The King of Brittany killed 37. King of Ireland, 27. Dang, that's impressive. Okay, we just caught up with the army of Aquitaine now. And we're going to make quick work of, of them. Looks like the King of Aquitaine is actually in command there. Beautiful. We're up to 84% in the war now. We just need to defeat another army, and I think we'll have it. Let's see how that one went down. Only 286 killed for me. We killed 9,000. Wow. Now the Holy Roman Emperor is going to win a big victory for us. Let's see if that's enough to push this thing over the edge. That gives us to 98. I think it's going to keep ticking up. Somebody just arrived with a claim on the Kingdom of Sweden. Come on, 100%, 100%. I think it's going to tick up on its own. There it is. All right, we've won. We take Anjou from France. So that's a nice change from the previous wars with France that we've had that did not go nearly that well. We expand the realm of Britannia deeper into France. Okay, so my current heir is Princess Anna, and unless I have a son, which is possible, although my wife's up to 35 now, so maybe not. We could marry her to the heir to the kingdom of Aquitaine in a matrilineal marriage, and their heirs would then not only rule Britannia, but rule Aquitaine. That would actually work out really nicely. So 
So now we've got an alliance with Aquitaine. Got a couple guys we can ransom here. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so county control is only nine in Anjou, so that's obviously something we've got to deal with. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to our marshal, Duke Joffrey, and get him working on increasing that county control. King Luanon has approached me, claiming he has discovered the continued legitimacy of my lineage is a risk until I, unless I take action. What? Um, yeah, let's find out what he means about that. My nephew, Guitol, is, was actually sired by Mayor Kieran. I don't know how much that really means. Oh, the Prince of Leon. Oh, interesting. Not cool. Not cool at all. Okay, we've got... Uh, looks like a peasant revolt headed our way. Rally the troops. Not too particularly concerned about peasant revolts. I can't even find where this particular peasant revolt is happening. 1,257 men. Oh, it's over here in Ireland. All right. Not a problem. Let's raise some local troops. We're going to construct some more holdings, too. I need to do that. Okay. I think this ought to be enough to handle the job against 1,245 men. Oh, he got up to 4,000 in his Peasant Revolt army. End of that. Disband the army. Okay, my daughter Sarah is of age. Uh, we're going to see if we can marry her off to the King of Aragon. Get us another alliance down there in Spain. We're just trying to kind of connect our house to as many of these Western European powers as we can. God knows that I was cursed the day I met John. He's dead. Today, however, that curse has been lifted. All right. Call to war. Ah, uh, sure, why not? Well, this is bad. My daughter has plague. And it's not just any daughter. This is the daughter through whom I was hoping to add Aquitaine. This is my heir to the throne. And she's married to the king of Aquitaine. Oh. And here's why this is a problem. She died. Oh. My new heir. I've already married off. Oh boy. To a prince from the Holy Roman Empire. The problem is, I don't think this is a matrilineal marriage. Okay, so it is now 1374. We're going to wrap it up right there. A lot has happened. A lot still to happen. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will see you again soon with another episode. Thanks for watching.